All right, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at both radio button and checkbox controls. So I wanna include both of these in the same video because of the fact that the intended behavior of these is very similar. So in either of these cases, typically you see radio buttons or checkboxes in say a form of some kind uh, because you're meant to make a selection. So with the radio button, typically you see those in situations where you're selecting one item out of several Whereas with checkboxes, typically it's going to be that you can select as many options as you want out of all the possible selections. So with our radio buttons, uh, because of the fact that you're selecting one item out of several, there needs to be some way to indicate which other items are within that same sort of group of radio buttons. So the way that we describe this is that we say that our radio buttons are going to be grouped into uh, what we describe as a toggle group. So we're first going to create our radio buttons. So you can see here we've got some code. Where we're making two radio buttons. We've got radio one and radio two. Uh, for each one of those, we've got uh, the constructor where we're giving it a string specifying some uh, label that's gonna go with that button. So we're gonna see our radio button, the little dot, and then right next to it is gonna be the text. In this case, it's gonna be option one and option two. We can then go ahead and create a toggle group. So we're also gonna be using the toggle group class so your radio group equals new toggle group. And then we're gonna go ahead and take the radio buttons that we just created and set their toggle group to be the toggle group that we just created. So let's uh, go over to NetBeans and start putting this together. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new project now. So we're gonna make a new JavaFX application for this. Click next. And so for this one, we're gonna be working with radio buttons and checkboxes. So I'm gonna call this radios and chucks. Go ahead and finish. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need, we'll go ahead and get rid of these extra comments that we don't need. And adjust the style. This application just slightly. Take that main method, move that to the top of the program. We'll then go ahead and start removing some of the uh, imports that we're not going to need. So in this particular case, I'm just going to remove these two. In a moment, I will end up using these for something. So we'll go ahead and leave it like that. Uh, the next thing we want to go ahead and do, uh, what I'll go ahead and start off doing is just creating the, uh, the code for this. So we'll slowly add the Im imports as we go. So we're going to do radio button. Uh, it was radio 1. It's going to be equal to a new radio button. And it's going to be option 1 for the string here. And so it's going to give us a little warning saying that we want to go ahead and import that. So you can see the import statement for it right here, javafx.scene.control.radio button. So it comes from that same package as uh, the other controls that we've seen already, like our label, button, and text field. So we want to go ahead and, uh, go ahead and import this. So it's going to include the import statement right here. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. Next, we'll go ahead and make our second radio button. So we have radio 2. This is going to be equal to a new radio button. For this one, we're going to be choosing option two. And then we want to go ahead and create our toggle group. So we got our toggle group, radio group, equal to a new toggle group. And again, it's going to be giving us an error because it needs the import. So if we take a look at this one, uh, the toggle group is also treated as a type of control. So we're going to have javafx.scene.control.toggle group. We want to go ahead and import that as well. So we're going to see that import statement just underneath our radio buttons. We'll then go ahead and set the toggle group for each of our two buttons. So we're going to say radio one dot set toggle group. And then we're going to pass in our radio group right there. And with the second one, we're going to do radio two dot set toggle group. And once again, it's going to be radio group so we'll go ahead and save that. We'll then finish up the rest of this. So 
we've got our toggle group with our two buttons inside of it. So we'll go ahead and include a container so we can use that as the root node of our, uh, our scene. For that one, I'll just go ahead and manually type this in. I'm going to do javafx.scene.layout.vbox. Oops. So I'll go ahead and grab the uh, vbox class, this import. We use that right here. Make our vbox. I'll call this vbox in all lowercase. This will be equal to a new vbox. And what I'm going to go ahead and put into this is going to be each one of the different radio buttons that we have. So we're going to do radio 1 and then radio 2. We're going to put those in like so. Uh, we can also go ahead and specify a little bit of spacing now. Uh, since we're dealing with radio buttons, I don't really need that much spacing between them. I'm just going to do five uh, pixels of spacing. And then once we've got this, we'll go ahead and create our scene. It's so equal to a new scene. We're going to be using the VBox as our root node. And then for the dimensions in this, let's go ahead and do something like uh, 200 by 200 for now. And then the last part, we're going to set up our scene with our stage. So primary stage dot set scene. Give it that scene value. Do primary stage dot set title. So for the title on this one, I'll go ahead and say radio buttons and chuck boxes. Do something kind of like that for it. And then finally, we want to make sure that it's actually displaying. So we're going to do primary stage dot show. So we'll save all this and we'll go ahead and run it. And so when it runs, we can see our two different, um, our two different radio buttons. We've got option one and option two. You can see the little circle right here. That if we click on it, we'll go ahead and fill that in to let us know that we've selected that option. And because these are in the same toggle group, if I go ahead and select another one, so if I select option two, that will also deselect option one. And then the same would also be true in the opposite case. If I go ahead and select option one, that's gonna deselect option two. So these are gonna be dependent on each other in the sense that if I select one, that's gonna deselect the other. And if I were to continue to add more radio buttons to this toggle group, then selecting one of these radio buttons will result in all of the other buttons being deselected. So we'll go ahead and close that. So right now we can see, you know, if we click on our buttons, it will kind of highlight it or fill in that, uh, that circle to let us know that we've clicked on it. But currently it doesn't actually do anything. So we want to consider what happens whenever uh, one of our buttons gets selected or maybe uh, another thing that we could go ahead and do is to uh, specify one of them to initially be selected. Maybe we have some default value that we want to choose. So we can make use of methods like is selected and set selected. So the is selected method will just check to see if a particular button is selected. Then we'll go ahead and execute some code here. The set selected method will go ahead and set a particular button to be selected if that, uh, that true value is passed in. And then the other thing we want to include is similar to our buttons, we need to have some kind of implementation for the behavior whenever the user uh, selects or clicks on one of these radio buttons. So we're going to end up doing pretty much the same thing that we've seen before. So we're going to use the set on action method of our radio buttons. So they have a, a method just like the buttons do. Uh, and then the thing that we're going to pass into there is going to be either a new uh, object from the uh, action event class uh, or maybe a class that extends action event uh, or it could be a, an anonymous center class or a lambda expression. So the example that I have right here shows us putting a lambda expression into the uh, set on action method. So let's take a look using a couple of these different uh, methods that we have. So things like set on action, set selected, and is selected to go ahead and add some behavior for our radio buttons. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is create a label. So to do that, I'll need to make sure that I'm importing that as well. So this will be another one that I do manually. I'm just going to do the import right here. So javafx.scene.control.label. 
it and save that. And then right here, uh, let's say just before I make my radio buttons, I'll go ahead and create a label. Uh, we'll just call this label in all lower case. This will be equal to a new label. And inside of here, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just say, you have selected option one. I'll go ahead and save that. And then right here in my V box, I'm going to go ahead and put this label underneath my two radio buttons. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we've created our two radio buttons. We've added them to the toggle group right here. So let's say that just after doing all of that, I also want to go ahead and implement the behavior for these buttons. So let's say radio one, we'll say dot set on action. And so what we'll go ahead and do is say event, we'll set up that pair of curly braces and we'll go ahead and put a Lambda expression into here. And we'll go ahead and say something like uh, set on action. So we'll say if this particular button is selected. So we're going to say if radio one dot is selected. Then what we want to go ahead and do is set the text to this label uh, of this label to continue to say what it currently says right here. So I'm just going to grab this, go ahead and copy that and paste that right there. And then alternatively, if we're dealing with radio button two, so we'll say radio two dot set on action. Again, it's going to be an event. And inside of this Lambda expression, we're just going to again, just check to make sure that that radio button is the one that is currently selected. Say label dot set text. I'm going to put this in, and we'll change this to say option two right here. So we've got this, and we are also going to be displaying this text initially. So if we're displaying this text initially, saying you have selected option one, it would probably be a good idea to really kind of convey this in the application by actually having option one selected when we first open the application. So one other thing I'm going to go ahead and do, so let's say maybe between where I set up the toggle groups and where I set up the behavior, we can also go ahead and do radio one dot set selected and make that true. So that then whenever I first run the application, so when that window first is being displayed on my, uh, my monitor, uh, we'll see that the first radio button is selected. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we can start off, we see that option one is selected. And let's say you have selected option one. We'll go ahead and change this. We'll choose option two. So now we see you have selected option two. And then if we go ahead and change this back, it'll go back to saying you have selected option one. So we can see the, the general behavior for our radio buttons here, as well as how to initially have one of them selected. Let me close that. So the next thing that I want to take a look at here is going to be uh, with checkbox controls. So we're going to go through pretty much the same process. So our checkbox controls are going to allow the user to make various yes, no, or kind of on off selections. And unlike radio button controls, these are going to allow for several independent choices. So selecting one checkbox doesn't just deselect all of the other checkboxes that are kind of associated with that decision. The general idea is that you want to be able to select multiple options at once. So in this case, we're showing a couple of checkboxes for being able to specify some kind of rules that we want to apply to our text. So very similar to what you might see in uh, Microsoft Word, for example. You have options for being able to do things like uh, make the text bold, underlined, or italicized. Um, so the checkbox class is going to offer similar methods to the radio button for doing things like checking a particular selection or performing a selection programmatically. Uh, in addition to that, uh, just like both the button and radio button controls, again, we need some way to be able to check whenever one of these checkboxes has been selected. So whenever the user clicks on one, we want to be able to handle that event in some way. So again, we're going to be using the set on action method to uh, respond to the event that we're getting from uh, the user clicking one of those checkboxes. So we'll go ahead and minimize this. Come back over to NetBeans. 
And so for this one, uh, let's say that after setting up all of this, I'm going to go ahead and create another set of items. So I'm going to keep this VBox that I have right here. But I'm going to modify this slightly to say that this is now going to be my radio button VBox. So I'm just going to say radio VBox. So that's going to cover that portion. We'll end up coming back to this in a moment. It's not going to be the root node anymore. So instead, what I'm going to go ahead and do right here is just add the other half of this program. So the first half or the top half is going to have those two radio buttons and a label. This bottom half is going to have uh, two checkboxes and a label. So we'll go ahead and make the label first. So the label in this case, we're going to say, uh, let's say label two for this one. So be equal to a new label. And for this one, we're going to have the exact same text as we had up here. So we'll go ahead and grab it from this location. Go ahead and copy that. And we'll go ahead and place it right here. And then what we'll go ahead and do is make our two checkboxes. So we're going to have checkbox. Uh, let's see. So this first one will say something like chk box one. Let's put a new new checkbox. And again, just like with our radio buttons, we'll go ahead and specify a label that we want to have right next to it. So we're going to say option one. And we've already got this error letting us know that we need to correct this. So we're going to go ahead and add this import for our checkboxes. And as you can probably guess, because this is another type of control, the import's going to be from that scene.control package. So we'll go ahead and import that. We'll double check up at the top of this program. And we can see our checkbox right here. We got it from javafx.scene.control.checkbox. Coming back to where we left off. So we got our first checkbox. We're we'll going to make our second checkbox. This will be checkbox two. Do a new checkbox. This one's going to be for option two. And so. What we'll go ahead and do next is uh, initially, since it will start off with option one saying, or saying that we have option one selected, let's go ahead and actually set that to be selected. So we're going to do checkbox one dot set selected. So set that to true. And then the next thing I want to go ahead and do is start setting up the, uh, the behavior for these checkboxes. And I'll note now that the behavior for these checkboxes is going to be uh, a little bit different from what I had to do for the radio buttons. You're going to find that it's a little bit more complex simply because of the fact that I need to be able to indicate a couple of different states. So there's the option or the, the situation where neither of these checkboxes will be selected, uh, but I also have to account for uh, just one of the two being selected or both being selected. So there's a couple of other uh, scenarios that we have to account for. So the first thing I'll go ahead and do is start creating the method for it. So we're going to have our set on action, do our event, and then have our event handler. And inside of here, what I want to go ahead and do is just check each one of the two buttons to see what uh, which ones are currently selected. So I want to check to see if the one that the, is firing this event, if that one's currently selected. Then what I need to go ahead and do right here is uh, specify that I'm going to have some kind of text that I want associated with that button or that, uh, that checkbox being selected that I will eventually add to my label. So the problem that I have right now is that I can't just set the text immediately to uh, option one because I need to do a second check. So I need to do another is selected to see if checkbox two is also selected. And if I do that and I again do set text on my label, uh, what I would end up running into is that I would change it. So it would say you have selected option one. I would then change it again to say you have selected option two. But what I really wanted to do is to to have both of these statements at the same time if both of these are selected. So what I need to actually do is use a, a variable of some kind to just temporarily hold 
the, uh, the text that I want to put into my label. So since the text that we put into a label is a string, it would be appropriate to just go ahead and use a string to do this. So if I do that, there is one other thing to note about this, which is that I'm using a string whose contents will change depending on which checkboxes are selected. So if we recall, when we're dealing with Lambda expressions, it's important to make sure that any of the variables that we are intending to modify, so anything that's not effectively final, uh, that's going to need to be private and final. So we're going to end up having to put that into the, uh, the global scope up here. So we can't do it with a local variable if that's the case. So we're going to do private, uh, I'm not using final, so just private string. Uh, for this one, we'll go ahead and say checkbox contents. So we can kind of keep track of precisely what the purpose of the string is. Say so this is initially going to be an empty string. Go ahead and save that. And then coming down here. So I made a mention of it right here. Uh, one other thing I want to go ahead and do is make sure that every time I do this, uh, before I've actually started to confirm which checkboxes are actually selected, I need to go ahead and kind of zero out the contents of that label. So we're going to go ahead and get our uh, checkbox contents right here. And again, make sure that it is emptied out. So just set it to an empty string. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, do these checks, and then we will concatenate some new uh, contents to it. So we're going to say checkbox contents, say plus equals, and then we're going to add on you have selected option one. Uh, period there. And then I'm also going to go ahead and use a new line character for this one. And then we'll say another if statement right here. If checkbox two dot is selected, then we'll go ahead and do checkbox contents plus equals. We'll say you have selected option two. And for this one, since this is, would always be the last statement, I'm not going to worry about adding the new line character here. The last thing I need to go ahead and do is then uh, take those checkbox contents and use those for my, uh, my set text. So I'm going to do label two dot set text. And we're going to put in our checkbox contents right there. And so this is going to be all of the behavior for checkbox one. Uh, if you think about this for a moment, you'll realize that for checkbox two, it's going to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this code that we have right here. Just go ahead and copy that. Just go ahead and paste it underneath. And we'll go ahead and modify this to be for checkbox two. Okay. And so once we've got all that, then we'll go ahead and finish up our second VBox. So we're going to have two separate VBoxes, one for the radio buttons, one for the checkboxes. So we're going to make this one. So if you recall the way that I was naming those. So we've got this VBox, Radio VBox, which is uh, the two radio buttons and our label. So right down here, we're going to make another VBox. We'll call this one Check VBox. So be equal to a new VBox. Uh, again, we'll go ahead and do five for the spacing. And then we're going to go ahead and put in checkbox one, checkbox two, and our label two. Save that. And then finally, for the root node. So for the root node, we'll go ahead and continue to use VBox. So go ahead and make that right here. So be equal to a new VBox. And for this one, what I'm, what I'm going to go ahead and do is this one's going to hold both my radio VBox and my check VBox. And the reason that I wanted to break this up into multiple VBoxes like this is because I want to add uh, some additional spacing between them. So for this one, I'm going to do something like uh, 25 units of spacing. Uh, so once we've got that, we'll go ahead and do our radio VBox and then our check. VBox and save that and then we'll go ahead and run this and see if everything is looking 
the way that we want it to. Okay, so we've got our two radio buttons and you have selected option one. We've got our two checkboxes and you have selected option one. So if I were to alternate between these two, we can see it changes to saying you've selected option one or you've selected option two. You can kind of flip flop like that when we're dealing with our two checkboxes. So let's start off with the simplest case. So let's say I uncheck option one. So when I do that, we see that there's nothing there because it emptied out that uh, string with the contents for that label. And because neither, neither of these were selected, we did not uh, concatenate any additional content to it. So if we go ahead and choose option one again, we can see you have selected option one, uncheck that, check just option two, it says you have selected option two. And then if we go ahead and select both, then we can see you have selected option one and you have selected option two. So we can see you know, all of the different states that we can have because of the way that uh, checkboxes work. Okay, so at this point, this is going to complete everything that I wanted to show with radio buttons and checkboxes. Uh, a couple of things to leave off on though. I will note, uh, as you might have uh, noticed already, the, uh, the code that we used for these two lambda expressions is exactly the same. So if you're thinking about this and you're considering the idea of you know, what happens if I add more checkboxes to this and they all end up doing pretty much the same thing, is it appropriate to continue to use lambda expressions to have you know, a different configuration of code for each one of these different checkboxes if they're all meant to do exactly the same thing? And you know, if you think about this for a moment, uh, as far as scaling this up, uh, the, the obvious answer would be no. A more appropriate way to approach this would be to uh, take the code that we've written right here, put that into a private inner class instead, and then all you have to do is just create a new object or just construct a new object of the, uh, the inner class that you made. And then that would greatly reduce the amount of code you end up with if you started adding more and more checkboxes to this. So uh, rather than doing that, I will leave that as something for you to consider. Uh, if you want to go ahead and play around with this, adding more checkboxes and maybe making that modification yourself, uh, I would certainly encourage you to try that out. Uh, but otherwise, I'll go ahead and leave it off right here. Uh, we'll move on to the next video. So getting into the next video, what we're going to uh, start talking about is going to be list view controls. So with that one, we're going to get into a fair bit of detail since there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different uh, characteristics of list views that needs to be covered. Uh, primarily, we're also going to use that as an opportunity to start getting into a lot more depth about that observable list interface that I had briefly introduced in the previous chapter. So we'll talk about that uh, as we go through the next video, or really the next uh, couple of videos covering list views.